Nowadays, 3D artists can create photorealistic environments, dynamic lighting, and incredibly realistic simulations. But digital human characters still struggle to feel human. We've all seen it. A character looks perfect. Perfect skin, subsurface scattering, reflections, perfectly tracked animation, and so on. But when they speak, the performance falls flat. There is no presence behind the eyes, and no life behind the face. And this is what I think people refer to when they say characters look dead inside. Despite all the progress in 3D, the human face remains one of the hardest things to pull off. So what is going on here? And what studios and professionals doing to fix this problem? The main issue comes down to something known as the Uncanny Valley, first described by robotic researcher Masashiro Mori. The Uncanny Valley refers to the dip in emotional response that we experience when something looks almost human, but not quite. If a design is clearly artificial or stylized, we don't expect it to behave like a real person, but if it gets close enough, it will trigger our subconscious expectations, even small inaccuracies stand down dramatically. As Eric Sandin said, it is really easy to fall into the uncanny valley. This phenomenon is especially visible in films like the Polar Express. The characters had realistic skin textures and proportions, but they lacked behavioral subtlety, particularly in the face. Expressions didn't sync with the emotion, eye contact felt unnatural, and the result was a disconnection that pulled audiences out of the moment. The problem isn't even visual, it is perceptual. When the 3D face lacks the fine details of a real human behavior, the mind will treat it as a failed imitation. The human eyes are biologically engineered for communication and subtle expressions. They respond constantly to light, thought, and emotions, even in ways we don't consciously notice. As the saying goes, the eyes are the windows to the soul, and in humans, eyes are constantly in motion, even when we are not. Real eyes also shift fluidly in conversation, reflect ambient light in multiple layers, and change shape slightly depending on our mood or fatigue. 3D eyes, however, sometimes fail to replicate this complexity. When eyes track too slowly, blink too evenly, or reflect light too cleanly, they begin to feel artificial no matter how detailed the iris or the cornea is. Studios like Wada Digital have made this a key focus. In Alita the Battle Angel, they modeled each iris with millions of polygons and scanned the actor's real eyes to recreate the layered structure of the human eye, complete with moisture and refraction. Even so, achieving a lifelike result required dozens of manual tweaks to mimic the way the eyes moved, blinked, and reacted to light. The rest of the face isn't any easier. Even when we are at rest, our facial muscles are in constant motion, adjusting slightly in response to thought, focus, tension, or emotion. These subtle shifts are called microexpressions. They are not dramatic, but they are vital to how we perceive each other's emotional state. A furrow in the brow, a half-raised lip, a squint, and other motions all add up to a readable, lifelike face. Early 3D characters often capture the major animations, like smiling, frowning, blinking, etc., but miss the micro-movements in between. That's why characters in games like Mass Effect Andromeda look technically correct, but emotionally vacant. Without facial nuance, expressions kind of feel off. Modern facial rigs are far more advanced. For Thanos in Avengers, for example, the animation team used complex simulation layers for muscle tension, skin sliding, and even vein behavior. Each part of the face, down to the forehead compression and neck tension, was separately controlled. To achieve that, Wada used 16 separate control rigs just for the neck muscles, and 5 different sets of forehead veins that responded to emotion. These systems help translate performance more accurately, but they also give animators the flexibility to fine-tune every moment of expression. It is also worth noting that the full-body animation doesn't suffer from this issue to the same extent. A character can run, jump, 
or gesture with minor errors, and the illusion often holds. This is because we are far less sensitive to limb movement compared to facial behavior. We don't instinctively study a shoulder rotation the way we scrutinize a glance or a smirk. Most studios use motion capture to solve body animation. It is relatively reliable and can be adopted across different rigs, but faces require far more control, far more precision, and far more intervention to feel believable. That's why most facial rigs use hundreds of parameters, covering jaw movement, skin tension, lip shape, and more. To get things closer to reality, studios also use facial scanning and AI-assisted systems to capture the tiny shifts that performance capture alone might miss. One solution many studios might use is high-resolution performance capture. Actors wear facial rigs or head-mounted cameras to record their expressions in minute details. The data is then applied to the digital character's face, sometimes enhanced or cleaned up by animators. Marvel used such approach on Thanos, basing his performance directly from Josh Brolin's face. The animation team even amplified certain movements, making his eyes squint or jaw clench slightly more pronounced, so they would read better on the digital version. In The Irishman, ILM went a different route. They recorded actors using a special three-camera rig that captured performance data without placing any dots or markers on the actors' faces. This was then used to digitally de-age De Niro, Pacino, and Pesci. It worked well overall, but even there, some viewers still sensed something was off, especially when it comes to the eyes. To build their system, they first used Medusa, a scanner rig that captured a library of facial expressions for each actor, providing a base mesh and muscle reference for their younger selves. Then they used Flux, ILM's internal software, to analyze on-set footage, interpreting how faces moved under different lighting conditions frame by frame. To make sure nothing felt off, ILM even used machine learning to compare the digital de-age results to real archival footage in addition to photos. The AI actually flagged inconsistencies, like eyelid curvature or jawline angles, so the team could refine the final performance. Since the eyes are such a focal point, artists often spend extra time refining them. They will model the tear film, simulate pupil dilation based on light changes, and even animate an even blinking. One trick is to ensure that all blinks are not identical, because real humans don't blink like robots. In emotional scenes, animators might adjust the timing of a single tear or tweak how light reflects off moisture to better convey a feeling. It is not uncommon for a VFX artist to spend hours on just a few frames to get that kind of moment right. For all the tech involved, human artistry actually still plays a huge role. Even with the best motion capture, animators often tweak the result to enhance storytelling, which I would say it is really, really important. They will leave the eye slightly before the head moves, or exaggerate an expression for clarity in a white shot. You know what I mean. Things like this. Sometimes though, studios choose to leave everything untouched. For example, ILM didn't modify the actor's performance in The Irishman, choosing to keep the micro details exactly as recorded. But in most big budget films, digital characters are shaped by both captured performance and careful artistic interpretation which I would say it is the most important because it is where the final decisions are made. Generally speaking, I would say we are getting closer to creating more realistic and believable characters. Just compare the rigid faces of the Polar Express to modern characters like Thanos or Alita, and the progress is obvious, but we are not completely there yet. As long as viewers still spot the moment where a digital character is introduced, and they feel light, it doesn't quite feel alive. The uncanny valley isn't fully crossed. This is why some artists and creators still choose stylization, like Pixar's exaggerated characters or different Marvel characters, by leading away from realism 
they can overcome the whole issue. Still, the push for life like digital humans continues, and this is a fact. So with better performance capture, more advanced rendering, and AI-driven refinement, the gap keeps narrowing. Eventually, we will hit a point where CGI faces or 3D faces feel natural, without any subconscious alarm bells going off. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.